So, Grigori Libagal, old friend, meet him every year in Riga, always giving good advice to Western uh, producers about the Russian system and the Russian possibilities. He is here to sp speak about documentaries in Russia and also to comment on what we have experienced during the last couple of days. Okay. Thank you for coming here, always. Thank you very much, Tua. Tua and Mikhail asked me later. Tua and Mikhail asked me to do some you know, notes on the margin to what we've been hearing for these two days from the point of view of a person working in Russia, working in um, the Russian documentary industry, if there is documentary industry in Russia. First of all, you know what I want to say? That it's very important that such meetings as we have today happen. They bring huge, huge positive impact. Of course, we met for two days. We spoke to very nice people. We gained a lot of new information. This stays for sure as a positive factor. But for many, many, many times, I saw how ideas stated in such meetings find their life. So, Ludmila and Victor, and you guys, thank you very much. It's very important what happens here today and happened yesterday. We know that it was very hard for you guys to organize that, but it was not in vain. Thank you for interpreters because you guys are my colleagues. Thank you. I'm going to talk about everything, so I'm sorry that it's going to be a mixture. I wanted to draw your attention to three groups of questions. First of all, I'm going to mention what didn't happen here, even though I think it should have happened. I thought that conference dedicated to financing should include just analysis, analysis of the sources of income that are available today for the Russian producer, because the situation changes, the sources of financing change, our attitude to the sources change. And the possibility to work with them to combine these various sources also change. And most importantly, no, no question, sorry. And most importantly, how the sources of financing work together with the financing systems that we've been discussing today. For example, there is one system of financing in Europe. For example, there, uh, television is different in America, in Russia, and in Europe. So there is another system of financing which is in America that is based on a huge number of foundations. We don't have that amount of foundations, neither in Europe nor in Russia. So what we see is that system does not really work well. The information that we've been hearing yesterday and today, you kind of have to process very carefully. And you have adapt this information to the real situation in Russia, in Russia today. And even two years ago, ten years ago, the situation would have been very different in Russia. So there are eight main sources of financing in Russia for documentary films. We have state funding, some people call it Ministry of Culture. Theoretically, they finance partially. So sometimes they, they finance roughly 450 documentaries per year. 
кинофильмы, которые должны So the government of Moscow, I've heard today also about the government of St. Petersburg and some other local governments finance roughly like 400, maybe more if you think more, okay, 400 films per year. They do finance, they do finance at least 400 films per year. I have a lot of information. I have a lot of information. I know the films that were financed by the government of Kazan, Yekaterinburg, Moscow and many other Russian cities. So I know that and we're going to come back to it today. This is part of another huge problem. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. So we have also television channels that finance. Well, about five years ago, they were financing roughly 1,500 films per year. And now I think they finance about 500 films per year. And then central channels that gave big budgets, they cut those budgets. So the big chunk of financing the documentaries are such channels as TV3, RIN TV, and the other television stations in Russia. We're not going to talk about all these stations separately. We're not going to talk about the quality of the films that they finance, but they do finance, and they do finance documentary films, which is important. We do have a center, a special center that finance for financing the films, and they finance about two 200 films per year. We also have local businesses. They finance not only corporate films, but they also finance quite a number of various films, including feature films, actually. What else do we have? We have crowdfunding. I know about 10 successful examples of crowdfunding. I'm sorry that Nikita Tikhanov Rao left because I wanted him to listen to me now. We've heard a lot of very interesting things in this um, two days about crowdfunding. I don't know how to put that, but from 1936, when the crowdfunding uh, was started by Jean Renoir for financing his great humanistic films, film Life Belongs to Us, so from 1936, 50 or even 60 great film projects have been financed. Um, about six or seven years ago, it worked in Russia, but we've had a tremendous amount of new legislation that were adopted in the last two years. So I just don't know, as a director of the company, how with how it will work in the present-day legislature, crowdfunding in Russia. So there is a very complicated tax legislature that is completely new, that's been adopted in the last two years, so I just don't know how it's going to work. I'm not saying that crowdfunding is not working now, today, but I'm saying that one of the tasks, for example, for our guild, is to, to do at least legal analysis of what legal aspects of the situation in Russia now. It would be very beneficial. It would be very just nice to do that analysis. I am a very realistic person. All the projects that undertake now are very concrete, very specific projects. But say, I know on the television channel Culture, I have to show at least one documentary that I have to buy and show. So just what's important now is practical knowledge. So what any normal producer would need now to get away from the theory and have the practical knowledge. 
Да? У нас есть несколько за последние 20 лет For the last 20 years, we have a lot of good, ex we have several good examples of production, but just a few. I think I'm wrong. I think I'm not correct because I don't have full amount of information. But all these co-production projects are not good straight projects, not. Especially taking into consideration new legislature in Russia. It is very possible that the grant that you received outside of the Russian Federation will... Sasha Krivanos will correct me if I'm wrong. So, according to our legislation, you become an agent of a foreign power. Because how can you prove to me that cinema is not an ideological sphere? So the, how could you prove you're not in the politics? You will not be able to prove that. So you become a foreign agent immediately. You'll be punished by the legislation. So here also what we need is legal analysis. How are we going to resolve this situation? I think there should be a non-government organization doing this analysis. Of course, the situation always changing. Our life becomes more difficult. But on the other hand, our life becomes better. Example could be better relations with the Ministry of Culture that are becoming better and better each year. And the Ministry of Culture now started to think that we do need to promote documentary films. Although, again, there is a huge gap in terms of financing. Unlike any other country of the world in Russia, the, um, the state migrants are financing cinema. Anywhere in the world, you can get financing if you're lucky for various stages of your work. So you get... So you get financing for development. Here in Russia, you will not get any financing for development. And if you don't have a possibility to prepare in a correct way to produce in the film, then we have the situation when there are 3,500 films. I should not be so pessimistic as I am. I'm sorry, colleagues. I know. Maybe even more. Maybe even more. But... So, a lot of films from which it's really hard to choose. Okay, you guys maybe can choose some good films, but apart from joking. So, first, financing problems, and secondly, the second group of questions, problems, that is, that is our everyday issues, problems that we always face, the same and the same is the same problems. Because another quality that makes us different from Americans, from Europeans, is a fantastic ability not to listen to other people, not to know anything that's happening in the world, to ignore everything and to program, so so to say, the world, judge on the, judge uh, based on how we see that world. So it's geocentrical, geocentrist theory. So if today I make an author cinema and then I make it shown on television then I become a revolutionary I become a I become a pioneer because before me nobody nobody ever showed the so-called film d'auteur in Russia if I manage to show that film d'auteur on the television I am great I am a pioneer because nobody has done that before I think so every time we start everything from scratch. For example, Jenny Grigory was telling us things that we create a database of Russian producers. Two years ago, Guild spent all their money to, to issue 
um, to issue this um, edition that would contain all the Russian producers, the film producers, and now we start from scratch. So every time we fight for something that has been already achieved, that has been solved, where there is a previous positive experience, but we just don't see it. I don't know what the reason for such mentality is. Maybe you'll be able to help me. When six years ago Ludmila started Miradox, it was thought of as as a portal that could unite professional interests of all our filmmakers' community. So like 33, 34,000 people in Russia, that's our community. It's a good portal. It managed to do a lot of the things, but we still have to do another portal, another portal, another portal. So it's the same thing with financing, financing of the films for television channels. Vera Obolonkina, a wonderful person. Yesterday, we saw her on the screens. She is correct. She was saying that the fate of her channel, of her great channel, I think the channel's been existing for like 10 years, maybe 8 years. But then Vera and Miss Kraszewska arrived. They had two months, and they changed that channel, and they made a great, 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 very interesting channel out of the one that was existing for eight years. And the channel shows a lot of great documentary films, mostly foreign films, but they started showing Russian films too. So Vera says that the future of the channel is under threat because people just don't watch it. Of course, they, of course the audience grew. It became twice as much. But when she says 9 million people, it means... It means that other people can, 9 million people can watch their channel among the other channels existing. It does not mean that this 9 million people always every day watch the 24 Doc, her channel. So there is no guarantee. There is also a channel that is dedicated to horror films. The audience can choose the horror films as well. There was mentioning Ross Telecom as a network, and then uh, 24 Doc has only the second place place and popularity. And the horror films are the first place. So it happens today. The channels that show documentary films, including the film d'auteur and Russian films, how many are there? Who knows? Cable channels. Does anybody know? Four? Twenty-seven. So we are at the point that is, it's a, very, it's a very difficult point, and we ask the question, how many people can sit on one horse? So how many viewers do we have at the very first stage when the interest towards documentary films is being revived? How many, um, how many people do we need? to watch them, and how many channels do we need to show to this audience that product, documentary films. I don't think that we do need 27 channels. Anyway, I want to conclude a very sad thing, actually, also con connected to financing. When we say it's very hard to find money to make a film, it is true, but we also always have to raise a question to what kind of film are we finding the money? There are projects that will win for sure. And you know, if you mention such project, you find the money very quickly. More than that, money will find you. But there are also projects to which, for which it's very hard to find money. And here we have a question. What else is the difference between our Russian documentary films that we have today from the best international documentary films? Here's the difference. We mentioned it with Dmitry Kabakov. How many such films do we have that can be shown in the movie theaters or in pride, prime time in the, on television? Miros and I do the program on the uh, culture channel. 
So roughly there is 2.2% um, of culture that it occupies. Before that, we had much bigger share of culture in our program. So what happens is that the audience is watching something else, some other problem, program, not ours, that is at the same time. And, uh, and we so always under the threat that the program can be closed. So Sonia Gutkova managed to get what we were crying about. We did not complain. We really literally cried for 20 years. That is, we don't have movie, movie theaters. Our films are not released. And not having a release for our films, we cannot pay we don't have money. So it's, again, all these problems, they are running around the money issue, the financial problems. So Sonia Gutkova, Sofia, she's great. She's fantastic. What she does is right. So she managed to open a movie theater, and she has 92 seats in that theater. How many Russian films which he show, and we remember that the tickets cost 200 or 300 rubles, how would it happen if, for example, the, the, the movie theater is full to 40%? If it's 40% or less, she has to stop screening the film, stop showing the film. So what's happening today? We can complain a lot. We can continue complaining. But besides complaining, we have to think thoroughly why and for whom? What's the reason that you're creating your films? I'm very happy that today and yesterday we talked a lot about cross-media. On the one hand, nothing is new really in this world. So like a year before last, I produced a cross-media project, DVD of great museums of the world. It was great, it was nice, and I managed to sell it. So there is a market, even though so there are not... Um, so if you need a success story, you have a success story. Cross-media in Russia works and it brings money. But talking seriously, if you do think seriously, first it should be another profession, another occupation. It has a different. It should have a different medium. It shouldn't be documentary films. It should be something else. It shouldn't be internet. It should not be television. But from time to time, we have new platforms. We have new means of creation. I think that the success of our cross-media people will come, but it will not, it will not touch our professional um, society, the documentary filmmakers, because the part of cross-media that will survive would be the one that already exists with us about like 70 years. So before the war, there were special publications in magazines and the newspapers that you could buy. You could buy a magazine or a newspaper and then you could pay more a little bit. You can buy the, um, the attachment and that is cross-media, that attachment that you're buying extra. Yes, I remember that. What you're saying is even better than cross-media. That's already a marketing step. So if you have an expensive DVD, you have, um, you have bonus parts. Somebody might watch that bonus part, and people might not watch this bonus part. But the budget of this DVD would grow um, significantly because of that optional part. So now I just want to stop complaining. I just thought about something very important. About like 20 years ago, I personally 
I started uh, working in the area of documentary films. I worked in the feature film industry my whole life. And then suddenly, snap, and in the fall of um, 93, I had a chance to make a good documentary film, to participate in a good documentary project, and I st stayed in the documentary sphere. What I see now is the problem that we discuss right now, and Sasha Krivanos will check that I'm right and will let me know if I'm not right. You were very young at those times in 93, but you still remember. We were discussing that. We were discussing all the problems that we have in the big events, during the small events. We were drinking or sometimes we were sober, but we discussed quite a number of times the same problems. But the train has been moving all those years, all this time there's been change happening. So a lot of the things that seemed to us absolutely unreachable in the year 94, for example, but then, you know, there was like a desert, if I may, so there was almost nothing. We did not have any documentary film, so we had no future, nothing, as we saw. But now, look, the situation changed. And actually, when I was making documentaries, I had not only foreign financing, but I also had Russian financing. And if we started with nothing, we started from scratch. Later on, later on we learned to make money, so we managed to make money. So in the very end, we have documentary films, Russian documentary films on television, quite a number of Russian films actually. We have documentary films shown in the movie theaters, but this so-called boom, the documentary boom, I know that in Moscow there are 30 film clubs at least. Our friends and sales agents are telling us that it is more profitable to show films during the festivals than to sell your rights to the television channels. So the situation does not stay intact, it moves. The most important thing that I can say is what I can advise is not to lose your motivation to move forward. Yesterday it was mentioned by Sofia Gutkova. Don't try to solve all the problems at once. Solve one problem and then another one and then another. So don't try to solve everything in one day and don't stop about the reports that I heard yesterday and today I was really amazed on how people were correct how people put the information together Tua, Mikkel, you guys were working great some, some of the reports were, seemed to be a bit far away from what's written as a name of the conference nevertheless each of the reporters managed to say something very relevant for all of us. So our task is to get this information, to process this information, and to make our conclusions. That's it. I'm done. And you have to be careful with the, with the device. So that's it. I want to finish. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. I think you should give him an applause. <laughs> 30 minutes without a script, very precise, very analytical, at least from my point of view. What are you saying? Uh, I'm Natalia Kamenetska. I'm the director of the film studio Natakam. It's a very small film studio I think we separated from Len Nauch film, the film studios that you guys know. Maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not correct because I can speak about science, science fiction films, but or popular science films. But so we have no need to take just the documentary film niche. I try to analyze the catalog of the message to men from a um, year before last. 
because we participated there. I noticed that producer, clear producer of documentary film, it's a great rarity. So usually there are no producers of documentary films. Usually the producer is also a director, or maybe it's just a big company that works on feature films, and as a byproduct, they also work with documentary films. So I started thinking, why does it happen like this? Of course, there is no financing that can give a talent to a director. Director should do his work, and if there is a producer, it will be easier for the director to work. I know that in St. Petersburg, there are very few, uh, I think, seven producers of documentary films, non-feature films. Seven, it's not many. And then I want to talk about financing. Financing is a very big problem usually, especially for the companies that work only with non-feature non films. You mentioned the Ministry of Culture. I want to say the second, um, second institution, that's the uh, uh, Ministry of Media, Mass Media. But I know that there are a lot of problems there too. So if we are not members of the Mass Media um, Society, then we have to register every film, and it's really hard to register films. So it seemed just very strange to us, the politics of Ministry of Culture of this year. At the very beginning, they, so they gave priority to television, to television or to somebody who works with television. And I want your guild to pay attention to that, what the Ministry of Culture does, preferring the television companies. There are already not too many sources of finance, but also I think the competition is not fair. And Ministry of Culture culture provides the fact that it's not fair. That's why it's very difficult for us. Mostly it's because of that registration requirement, but I wanted to say something else. I'm sorry I speak too much. I'm sorry that instead of asking the question, I'm talking a lot. No, no, you're great. It's very relevant. So I am a person that, um, that knows what the state cinema is. Sometimes when their directors were not healthy, I came and I was um, presenting their movies, their films. And I knew that the committee of uh, cinema, when they were presenting a film, everybody had to watch the film that they financed. Sometimes it was a very nice idea, but sometimes it was very hard that they all had to watch. But the good thing, as a result, they knew the film directors personally. So next year, when they had an application, they already they knew, okay, the application maybe is not strong, but we know personally the director, he's a great director, he'll do a great film because we know him personally. But sometimes when the application was good, they could know the director is not strong, so they could just judge differently. And I think that's very, that's sort of... Um, that sort of feedback that works immediately. And now the situation changed and it became worse. You have a lot of applications in the Ministry of Culture. Of course, you have a jury made of experts. But later on, this jury does not watch the Ministry of Culture, also does not watch the films that they financed. And I think they should watch the films because they have to take responsibility for what they gave money for. As soon as the situation changes, as I wanted to change, as I'm mentioning now, the quality will be become better. I'm not done. I have something else to say. In the year 1979, we had 1,400 non-feature films per year. Out of them, 41 was full-length film. And so I was thinking, how can they watch all those films, this, you know, people who are financing? And then I remember that a lot of the times we did not show them the films. So actually, I mean, it's just small, small projects that I'm thinking about. Maybe when we talk about priorities, priorities on the bigger scale, so fighting alcoholism or some medical problems, some topics as such, we have to return the situation as it was before in the Soviet times when the ministry already gave some money and they had to allocate that money on the cinema, otherwise they wouldn't be allocated at all. I'm sorry, I have to interrupt you.
Just imagine for a second the situation where we're talking about the increasing the budget financing and imagine that the Minister of Culture, Finance, Fife uh, works and uh, authority for mass communication, 10, uh, 10 works, and the rest to pro uh, provides for proportional financing. But it's not, uh, it's, it's, it's a problem, yes, but it, uh, it's not isolated to that. Uh, the problem is how to create one, 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 one example, one instance when a, a, a film Finance, uh, financed by no matter how, can be profitable, can pay off. Oh, you're a pessimist, yeah, but I'm an optimist. Industry, which is a losing money, industry, uh, losing money industry, uh, no, no matter where it gets money from, it's not, uh, it can be called an industry. We can't e exist uh, in the way that public television in Europe exists. We have no public television. Okay, we have a TV company that is, is uh, formally called by uh, public uh, TV. Okay, uh, and, and I heard that, and that, that 9 per 9 percent uh, of the audience have uh, heard about this channel. Uh, we used to have two, uh, two special uh, movie theaters that uh, has been closed. I worked with tw for 25 years with uh, uh, cinemas in my life. The, uh, including one, uh, one uh, probably the best uh, uh, movie, the movie theater uh, in uh, in Russian Soviet Union, Illusion, and I absolutely aware that the cinema takes those films that will uh, secure them full house, full audience. If you, if you talk about the uh, 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 science and knowledge uh, cinema, I don't know how it's uh, Leningrad's equivalent used to be called. But probably uh, you're talking about a movie theater that was uh, uh, sub sub subsidized. Okay, everything you, that you've been talking about is very relevant, is very topical, and uh, the guilt uh, even before bringing the new team was very active in this respect. Uh, uh, the first uh, uh, law draft about uh, uh, for financing uh, so-called TV TV law, probably yes. But anyway. Now we have concrete instances when a film made completely with uh, its own financing paid off during one year time or nearly, nearly paid itself with a, with, with a big, bigger budget and uh, became profitable only within the club screening uh, format. This picture uh, by uh, Roman Liberov with his, uh, based on the script of Sergei Davlatov. What I want most is that the new uh, film by Roma, which is being screened uh, in, in the movie theater Pioneer, the, uh, is the, the house is, is full every night. It has been on for three or four uh, weeks only. Grigori, it, it's yeah. becoming a little difficult for us not Russia to Britain. follow. I mean, okay. it is an international right. conference. Could we uh, I will go back on slower, slower. okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm simply... Just a minute. I'm talking about the, maybe the first uh, successful example of uh, uh, getting back the uh, financing for the film, of recouping your expenses, which actually happened quite recently with the uh, film by an independent uh, producer director, Roman Liberov, written by Sergei Davlatov, which is the epitome of what I was talking about, an audience-friendly film.
which is really interesting for everyone. Uh, so I saw uh, the premiere was at my film club in Moscow 14 months ago. Yes. Uh, and then we gave the author the list and the context of all the film societies in the major cities uh, in Russia, in Novosibirsk, in Ekaterinburg, in, and for the last 11 months he traveled with his film, presenting it uh, in those uh, small and not so small theaters, normally giving 10, 12, 15 screenings at any given place using uh, Facebook and quite a lot of more traditional uh, promotion uh, means uh, to create momentum. And uh, the result is quite promising. And there is an example number two, of which Vera mentioned. Vera Balonkin, I mean, the head of the uh, 24 Doc uh, cable channel. Uh, this uh, color, Colors of Math by Екатерина Еременко. По-русски это называется «Чувственная математика». Again, after the festival screening in Moscow, which was really... Uh, some of you were there. You remember people sitting uh, on the floor because uh, all the stairs were uh, absolutely full. Uh, she, again, she made rounds with with this film, and then it was uh, taken by 24 Doc again on, it's not a normal uh, distribution, it's again something like club, film society type distribution, okay? Вот, собственно, что товарищи не понимали. Екатерина's film, no, it wasn't, an, obviously it was an international uh, finance film since she is, uh, she is a German citizen. Uh, MDR only came at the very last stage. The bulk of money was given by the uh, American uh, mathematical society, actually by the Russian emigre mathematics working in the uh, Princeton University. That's Vitaly Rachmanov, a journalist and producer, Grigory, while we smoked, you promised me to to give your comments on the situation that I I, I asked you about uh, following the same pitfall, the situation that Tour commented already on. How can we protect? Uh, our rights. We have discussed it many times. The idea, ideas are sometimes stolen, ideas of films. Considering our volume of documentary production, it's uh, un unrealistic to run all the films through, through pitching so that you can have a, gar a paper where you have synopsis uh, with the stamp uh, uh, which would confirm that you, you you have your preferential right. But you, you can you can you can do the following way. You can really prepare prepare the synopsis and uh, have it register it uh, through respective authorities, authorities that are in charge of protecting uh, uh, rights. Uh, you know, this, uh, so this uh, intellectual pro property rights uh, uh, and this uh, method of protection uh, is not very expensive and if you face a, a doubtful uh, in doubt and you suspect that someone has stolen your situation, you can protect yourself uh, through that mean. It's a very good question actually. Actually, because this question bring, brings me to what we haven't uh, uh, spoken about yet, the question of uh, uh, financing 
of, uh, of having to work within limits of budget that uh, will guarantee that you deal only with uh, uh, protected and licensed uh, intellectual property. Up, up till now, na national, many TV channels, including national TV channels, uh, are more than willing to take uh, uh, films where, with stolen music or with uh, stolen images and uh, as long as it as it happens, then as long as it hap such things happens, no co-production, even even if we solve the problems that I have uh, mentioned above, no co-production are likely. No co-production are likely. And, but in this uh, field, uh, the situation is changing. The new law that uh, uh, telephone, uh, cell phone companies are against, so this law is already in place uh, with all its uh, uh, but still things are moving and we'll have to see where we'll come. But anyway, I have but, but anyway, it's, it's better even not to steal for example, music from somewhere, but to, to, to do it yourself or to have someone do it for you. How the things are dealing with this? The protection of rights in your organization. How do you do that, Perti? Uh, what? Can you give some advice? No, of course, I always make uh, contracts with everybody who are creating the film so that uh, as a producer I own all the rights and um, you, uh, you, I usually use lawyers to write the papers so that there are no, no mistakes in them and, okay. so you also have a contract between producer and director in every case yeah. and uh, what, is, what are the requirements from a public broadcaster when the producer comes. What kind of rights do you need to see on paper covered before you say, okay, go, Ica Vicolati? Actually, we have a quite really clear procedure. I mean, the contract that has been gone through with our lawyers, and, and it means that actually the producer that we make the co-production contract will guarantee that all those rights that has been discussed, production company will guarantee. That's a question of also the, not only it can be also the question of the protagonists of the films or the, the question of the archive materials or everything. So in that sense, because the number of the films that we are co-producing is quite huge, we don't go into the contracts what the production company has done but they have to guarantee to us that they have done uh, these contracts. Of course, we could say that we have, not very often, but we have situations when the film is going to be almost finished, and it can be that the protagonists or those who have been shot for the film start to argue against the production company. And then we have, have our involvement in the same sense of that we have used our lawyers to solve the problem sometimes, even in the negotiation table. Because it's not always only the question for us about the legal rights, but it's also a question about the ethical rights. Like if the protagonist of the film will say that I will hang myself if this part will be in the film. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit more problematic than to solve. Спасибо, <laughs> Ика. And uh, Mikhail wanted to say something. Uh, if if you would be okay. I просто хотел спросить на тему, которая I wanted to say something, uh, ask something about the topic, but hasn't been touched upon yet. Are there any programs in Russia uh, for financing debut films? Uh, it's hard to talk about developing of non-fiction film when a new new generation uh, uh, ha ha have no chance to. Uh, to, uh, to get financing for the, their debut films. There's a special uh, program for, for debuts that's financed by
by Minister of Culture. This is the only program that theoretically at least doesn't involve, uh, doesn't require some partial, uh, partial um, financing from a di different source, but it's uh, um, you have you have uh, to face a lot of competition because we have a lot of uh, uh, re requests because all uh, graduates from universities, all the industry universities.